Thank you for joining me today. Today we turn to Colossians 3 once again and continue to talk about new life living. Today we're going to look specifically at new life living in the home. And we'll be not only in Colossians 3, but we'll also be in Ephesians 5 today. So I'd like to begin today by reading Colossians 3, verses 18 to 21, and also Ephesians 5, verse 22 through chapter 6, verse 4. Beginning with Colossians 3. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. And then in Ephesians 5, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Last Sunday, we looked together at new life living as described for us in Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14. We learned that new life living is marked by the qualities of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness, and love. Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17 tell us that as we live this new life, we will let the peace of God guide us the word of Christ control us, and the name of Christ be seen in us. Now, as Paul continues to write about new life living, he reminds us that new life living extends to the home as well. The believer in Jesus Christ will live differently than the world when it comes to the home. God established the home, and he has a plan for the home. According to God's plan, new life homes will be different from the world around us. In Colossians 3, verses 18 to 21, Paul gives a simple and direct description of new life living in the home by giving four direct commands to four groups, wives, husbands, children, and fathers or parents. Today we're going to look at the first two, wives and husbands, and Next Sunday, Lord willing, we'll look at the, the other two, children and fathers or parents. This teaching is probably nothing that you haven't heard before, but it's good for us to be reminded of it. Because if we claim to be ones who have received new life from Jesus Christ through faith in him, then our lives should be testimonies of new life living, even in our homes. So let's begin today where Paul begins with wives, Colossians 3, verse 18. Wives, submit. The word submit has become a difficult word, even a hated word to many in our world today. There are many voices speaking out against submission to government, submission to law and order, submission to police, and submission to authority in general. So to hear the word submit in the context of marriage and the home instantly rubs many people the wrong way. But the word submit is the word that God guided Paul to use in Colossians 3 as he spoke to wives. 
Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. In the context of new life living in the home, the word submit is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Notice with me five brief thoughts to help us understand this command, wives submit. Number one, this is the way God designed the home. At creation, God created Adam, and then he created Eve from Adam, and he said that he was creating her as a helper fit for him, Genesis 2.18. So he designed the home from the beginning. And God's order reflects this submission idea. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3 says, The head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. And then he compares, or Paul compares um, this relationship to the church when he says in Ephesians 5, 23 and 24, For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And the point is that God knows what is best. And he knows that, it's, that it is best when there's a leader in the home and and this is the way that he designed it from the beginning. So for wives to submit is God's idea, not man's idea. That's why Paul can say here, as is fitting in the Lord. So number one, this is the way God designed the home. Number two, submit speaks of teamwork. Often we think of submit as being a bad thing, uh, of, of inequality, of even slavery or something like that. But the word submit really means to arrange in rank under. Now think of that in a, in a military standing or in a sports standing. In, in the military or on a sports team, everyone works together for the common good, but there's still an officer or a coach who's the leader. So in the home, the husband and wife work together for the common good of the family. It's teamwork, but the husband is to be the leader. And if you think about the big picture, this is another reason why it's so important for a believer to marry a believer. So there'll be unity in that teamwork. Uh, submission does not uh, give the picture of being unequal. First Peter 3, 7, speaking of husbands and wives, says that they are heirs together of the grace of life. Uh, submission doesn't mean that the wife has no say, that the wife is silent. In fact, in Proverbs 31, where it talks about uh, the virtuous woman, in verse 26, it says that she opens her mouth with wisdom. Men, we are wise to listen to our wives. The best teams respect the coach. The best military units respect the officer. And so the best submitting wife respects her husband. Ephesians 5.33 says, Nevertheless, let the wife see that she respects her husband. So yes, there is this idea of being arranged under authority, under a leader, but it really is a picture of teamwork. And by the way, uh, one other note, this is talking about your home. This is talking about the wife submitting to her husband. It's not saying that uh, the woman has to submit to every man in this way, and it doesn't extend to a woman's place in society at large. This is talking about the home and a wife submitting and being a teammate of her own husband. The third thing here is that submission is a spiritual attitude. Ephesians 5.22 says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. The decision to submit to a husband is, is a decision to obey and honor God. And so it's a spiritual decision. Submission pleases God because God created it. He designed it that way. So when you choose to submit to your husband, you choose to submit because you love Jesus. You shouldn't base your decision on whether the husband is worthy of your submission, but you should do it because God designed it that way and you love God. So it's out of love for God. It's out of love for Jesus. It's a spiritual attitude. Now you might say, do I submit to my husband when he's trying to get me to do something sinful. And, and no, this does not extend to, to leading that leads into sin against God. But it is a spiritual attitude to be in submission to the husband. 
Number four, submission is a mark of beauty. Since God designed this pattern for the home and obedience to God's design pleases him, and submission reflects a spiritual attitude. Therefore, submission is a mark of true beauty to God and, and to others as well. Proverbs 31.30 says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Peter put it this way in 1 Peter 3, Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Now, there's nothing wrong with outward beauty, arranging the hair, wearing gold, putting on good, fine clothes. Nothing wrong with that. But he says here that true beauty comes from within, and submission is a mark of beauty. And when we pattern our homes after God's pattern, including submission, it's a beautiful thing. Now, there's a pattern for husbands, too, and we'll look at that here in a few minutes. But finally here, number five, submission is a testimony for Jesus. God can use an attitude of godly submission to bring glory to him and to draw people to him, even unbelieving husbands. 1 Peter 3, 1 says, Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. Now, this isn't always easy. I, I get that. But submission can be a testimony for Jesus, not only to an unbelieving husband, but also to a watching world that, that wonders whether Jesus makes a difference in everyday life. This little poem is a good reminder Amid the duties of the day and all I think and do and say, whether I work or rest or play, Lord, keep me sweet at home. When household duties claim my care and I seem needed everywhere, then tune my heart to praise and prayer and keep me sweet at home. No matter what the day may bring or night, I pray in everything my life may glorify my King, especially at home. New life living in the home for the wife means submit. But Paul, God here, speaking through Paul, does not only talk to wives, thankfully, he also has clear instruction for husbands about new life living in the home. And Colossians 3 verse 19 gives us this instruction, and that is husbands love. Husbands love your wives and be not bitter toward them. Now, the command is clear. Husbands, love. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives. And it goes without saying that if the husband is loving his wife as he should, then the idea of submission becomes much easier for the wife. It's all part of new life living in the home. Again, I'd like to share five brief thoughts to, to help us understand this command, Husbands, love your wives. First of all, this love is a godly love, not an earthly love. Just like the word submit, the word love is often misunderstood and abused. To some, love only means the, the physical, sexual aspect of love. Uh, to some, love speaks of a favorite thing or a favorite person, you know, something like, I love milkshakes. Uh, to others, love is, is the warm, mushy emotion of love kind of the hallmark channel type of love. But while these ideas are certainly a part of the overall picture of love, they emphasize the earthly part of love, not the godly part of love. Godly love is represented in the word agape, which is translated love here. It's love that is giving and sacrificial. It's holy and pure. This type of love is described in the familiar words of 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love 
Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. This is the love that God expects of a husband for his wife. It's the love of new life living. So it's a godly love, not an earthly love. The second thought about love is this. This love is patterned after Jesus' love. Jesus' love for the church, his love for us, is the perfect pattern of the love God wants a husband to have for his wife. It's described for us in Ephesians chapter 5 where it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Now, in this pattern of love that Jesus has given to us, there are two ideas that we need to, to see. First of all, it's the idea of sacrificial love. It says that he, Jesus, gave himself up for her, the church. Now, how much did Jesus love us, love the church? Enough to die as the sacrifice for our sin. That's the picture of salvation love, that Jesus died in our place. He sacrificed for us. Have you received that sacrificial love from Jesus as a payment for your sin? Husbands, love is sacrificial. It's giving to the point of giving all, like Jesus did. So not only is it sacrificial love, but also it points to sanctifying love, that he might sanctify her. Now the word sanctify, just like the word holy, means to be set apart. Jesus died so that we might be cleansed of our sin and be set apart from sin to him, to be set apart pure as his bride. Love in marriage is pure. It's to be pure in every part of marriage. Love in marriage is, is set apart. The wife is set apart for the husband and the husband is set apart for the wife. And so this idea to love with the sanctifying love is husbands to love your wives in such a way that she knows that she is yours, that she is your set apart one, that she is the only one for you. That's Jesus's love, sacrificial and sanctifying. It's the pattern for the husband and his love for his wife. Third thought about love is that this love is a caring love. Again, back in Ephesians chapter 5, it tells us about this caring love. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. Now, this idea of caring love, as it tells us here, begins with the question, how much do I love myself? And some might say, well, not very much. But really, do you care for yourself? Here he says, talks about nourishing and cherishing. In other words, do you care for your own needs? Do you bathe? Do you eat? Do you sleep? Of course you do. You care for these basic necessities. And so caring love loves our wives uh, as we love ourselves, but it loves her not simply as we want to be loved, but even better. It includes making sure that, that her needs are met, that she feels safe and secure. This is the idea of a caring love. Just as we care for ourselves, we should care even more for our spouse, for our wife. Number four, this love is a sweet love. Colossians 3.19 says, And do not be bitter toward them. And the NIV says, Do not be harsh with them. Now we all know that there are a lot of different flavors. And among different flavors are the idea of sour, uh, the idea of bitter, and the idea of sweet. Now, sour, bitter, sweet, they all have a place. But isn't there just something attractive about sweet? We, we have sweet tooth. We, we like sweet. And so this idea of sweet love points to our attitude in love. Remember 1 Corinthians 13 where it said, Love is not rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Uh, those aren't very uh, sweet thoughts, are they? 
Husbands, would your wife say that you are sweet? Or would she say you're sour or bitter? Something to think about is our attitude in love and how we display our love. And finally, today, this love is spiritual business. 1 Peter 3, 7 reminds us of this, where it says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, this describes the loving relationship, the, the loving attitude of a husband to the wife. He says, live with them in an understanding way. Well, you might say, I'll never understand my wife. Well, exactly. We need to try harder. We need to try to understand, to put ourselves in her shoes, to see things from her perspective, to help us know how to better love her. It says to honor her as the weaker vessel. Now, that's not a derogatory term. It just, again, points to the fact that our wives need to be cared for. They need protecting. They need providing. And we, as the husband, as the leader, are to, to provide that. And then it says that it reminds us that we're heirs together of God's grace, that God loves husbands and wives equally. They're partners. They're teammates. But then there's the clear reminder so that your prayers may not be hindered. This to me is a reminder that love, marriage, is spiritual business. Not loving God as designed is spiritual hindrance. So, excuse me, not loving our wives as God has designed is a spiritual hindrance. It'll have an impact on our spiritual life. Your marriage is a reflection of your relationship with Jesus. Your love for your wife is a reflection of your love for Jesus. You see, love is spiritual business. If we're not loving our wives in the way that God intends us to, it's going to have an impact on our spiritual life. And it helps to put the importance of our love and marriage in perspective. Well, there's some great reminders here in Colossians 3 that new life living includes the home. Now, homes have many different looks. Uh, sometimes there's only one in the home. Sometimes there's a house full. But often, there's a husband and a wife. And so there's clear instructions here. Wives, submit. Remember, God designed it this way, so it's good. And it speaks of, of teamwork in the home. It's a spiritual attitude, a mark of beauty, and a testimony for Jesus Christ. It's part of new life living. And then husbands, love. Remember, it's a godly, agape love. It's patterned after the love of Jesus. We can say John 3.16 love, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's a caring love and a sweet love. And please remember, this is spiritual business. You see, it's part of new life living. When we know Christ is our personal Savior, we are given a new life. And that new life looks different from the old life. And new life living has an impact on our marriages. New life living includes the home, no matter what your home looks like. Now, today we looked at husbands and wives. Uh, next week, Lord willing, we'll look at what what the instruction here says to children and to fathers or parents. And, and also remember that no matter who you are, you can have, you can be an influence for new life living and at home and everywhere. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for this instruction from your word on new life living and the reminder that new life living extends to the home. And so for those who are watching today, who are wives, I pray that you would impact their hearts uh, to, remind, to be reminded of your design for the home and to live as a submissive teammate in the home. And for those who are watching who may be husbands, Lord, help us to remember the importance of loving as Christ loved us and to, to love our wives in that way so that we can be an example of new life living. And Father, help us not to forget that all of this is because of the new life that you've given us through Jesus. And if there's anyone listening today who has never placed their faith and trust in Jesus, may they see the importance of forgiveness and eternal life and the new life that comes through Jesus. 
and put their faith in him today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this instruction in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, thank you for joining me today. I trust that this teaching on new life living in the home has been helpful and a blessing to you. And I encourage you to join us as we meet outside on Sundays at 10 a.m. If you're not able to join us here, I hope that you'll continue to join me online. As always, be safe, be faithful. Thank you very much. Goodbye.